In a series of late night tweets, President Trump gave a timeline for a Republican health care plan, a big idea. He's got it all figured out. Here's the plan. It's going to come out in November of 2020, more than a year and a half away. There is no actual plan. That's when the plan is going to be announced. Interesting. Trump is also declaring that the 2020 elections will be in part a referendum on health care. So it means he can make up all he wants about a plan that doesn't exist and then not follow through on his promises, repeating what he did the first time around. This despite congressional Republicans telling reporters that they hope the president will drop the subject, fearing another Democratic wave election in which health care was by far the most important issue to voters. In tweets posted after 10 p.m. Washington time, the president writes the Republicans are developing a really great health care plan with far lower premiums cost and deductibles than Obamacare. Vote will be taken right after the election when Republicans hold the Senate and win back the House. Bob Costa, uh, I said last hour, to Jim mm. Vanda High, this would be as if Nancy Pelosi announced to Democrats, hey, I've got a great idea. We're going to run as the pro-life party in 2020. I mean, Donald Trump bringing all this up, of course, you know, reminds voters. He promised universal health care on 60 Minutes. He lied about that. He promised he wouldn't cut Medicare. He lied about that. He promised he wouldn't cut Medicaid. He lied about that. He promised he had this great plan that was, again, going to give everybody health care. It was going to be a better plan. It was going to cost them less money, less deductibles, less everything. And of course, here we are two years in, and none of that's happened. And Republicans, Bob, it's been 10 years since Obamacare. Republicans have never come up with a unifying health care plan. What, what are you hearing, not only in the administration, but on the Hill, about uh, Republicans' response to Donald Trump making 2020 a referendum on health care? Republicans on Capitol Hill have actually not been too skittish about the president's comments. They know the GOP does not have a plan. They also think back to those comments the president made early on in 2017 about universal health care, and they compare these recent comments and tweets to those comments. It's about politics right now for President Trump in the wake of the 2018 elections to try to signal to voters that the Republican Party does care about health care, even if they're not formally pursuing health care legislation. It's about setting up the party as something that's ready to address voters' concerns for 2020. Bob, can you explain to our viewers why it is that the Republicans have made opposition to Obamacare their overriding policy position over the past 11 years uh, or decade, past decade? Why is it that they still have been incapable of coming up with a unifying plan, an alternative to Obamacare? And even now, the president is saying they won't have one for the rest of 2019 or 2020. Why, is, why has this issue been so hard for Republicans uh, to craft a response? It would be easy for people to say Republicans are simply disorganized. But based on my reporting, they are making a choice. They choose not to address things like Medicare or Medicaid. They choose not to go after pre-existing conditions, knowing how politically unpopular that is. They want to be seen as a party that's compassionate, so they talk in broad terms about health care. But they see the private polling. They talk to their constituents. They know on these tricky thorny health care issues, there's actually not a political appetite out there in the country, in their view, to tackle these issues. So for now, as they have before, they're talking about them, but not pursuing them in an aggressive way on the policy front. So, Kurt, uh, my former party, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure, are you, are you still a Republican? Kurt? I am not. I am officially a Democrat. Oh, okay. Wow. So both of our former parties. We we Gosh. grew we grew up What's we left? grew up Republicans. Uh, there were like a lot right of here. things. <laughs> lot, yeah, a lot of things about the Republican Party I liked. Uh, they were fiscally responsible. I I I liked uh, at least my wing of the party's view on uh, foreign policy, um, but we could never get our act together when it came to health care. Uh, so many of us ran against Hillary Clinton's attempt at health uh, mm -hmm. care in 93 and 94, and that worked. 
Uh, and then, of course, the Tea Party came in in 2010, running against Barack Obama's uh, health care reform. Why is it impossible? Why can't Republicans come up with a health care plan that can, can unite their caucus, unite their party, and appeal to the American people? You know, I, I think, Joe, a lot of it is it's always easier to be against something and for nothing. And for a while, for Republicans, it worked. They took back the House in 2010 running against Obamacare. They continued to hold their majority in 2012 and 2014 and 2016. And I think there is that mindset of, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We're not responsible for anything. I think they also thought they wouldn't be in the White House uh, after Barack Obama's presidency. I think everyone predominantly thought that Donald Trump would not become the president of the United States and Hillary Clinton would win. Therefore, it wasn't their problem to fix health care. And so they spent the last decade completely void of ideas because they felt like they didn't need them to be politically successful. Obviously, that turned out to be untrue. That was the driving cause of why they lost their majority in the midterms last November. And now, for reasons that no Republican on Capitol Hill can tell you, Donald Trump is making this issue front and center going forward. And he is now ensured through his tweet storm that this will be a center stage issue all the way through 2020. And of course, the absurdity, Joe, of saying, I have a great plan. I'm not going to tell you about it or act on it until after you vote me back in. Uh, good luck with that. Well, again, that was Mika, Richard Nixon's secret plan to win in <laughs> Vietnam in 1972, which oh, he admitted to uh, David Frost later that he had no such plan. But no plan. again, the danger for Republicans here uh, uh, should be obvious from their historic route in 2018. And they've got a president who in 2020, like I can tell you guys now, 2020, Donald Trump is going to run, and there are going to be clips of Donald Trump promising universal health care and lying about it. There are going to be clips of him promising not to cut Medicare and lying about it. There are going to be clips of him promising to cut Medicaid, not to cut Medicaid, and lying about it. There are going to be clips of him promising that he was, they're going to be low, lower deductibles and him yeah. lying about it. I mean, there are going to be clips of all of these promises he made on health care. They're going to be proven to be all lies. And yes, 33% of Americans just won't give so, a damn. And if, but the majority of Americans will, yeah, and it they'll will feel it. defeat Donald Trump and every Republican that aligns with him. And the difference here is it's not just words going out into the ether where he can brand things and then go, you know, move on and, and not even fulfill his promises, like the wall, like the border. He's making accusations and promises that he will not keep. And like health care during the campaign, he made promises. He didn't keep them. People who need health care, people who depend on some sort of health care to help pay for the incredible costs of their pre-existing conditions. Um, they are actually feeling this in real time. They're actually scared. So Republicans not only have to deal with the fact that the president doesn't keep his promises, but that people have now lived through a presidency where those promises were not kept. Well, it's going to be a harder sell. One last thing, too. I know a lot of people watching today, and I know a lot of Americans just in general, become very frustrated because the president will uh, spit out a series of lies in a day. Exoneration. The president will say things that are bigoted, uh, that, that play on racism, that play on fear, that suggest he has no respect for the rule of law, that he has no respect for the independence of the federal judiciary, that he has no respect for the free press. I understand that. But the bill comes due. That's what Americans have to understand. Yes, he's doing Or no, this. Republicans need to understand well, it. Americans, Americans are the ones handing Americans, them the bill. But th those that become frustrated need to understand the bill comes due. No, there's not a referee every day <laughs> that Americans will listen to that can say, this is the truth, this is the lie. It's just the culture we live in now. People choose their own media outlets. But you look at what happens in this country every two years. That's when Americans become the official. And Donald Trump's lies, his bigotry, what happened at Charlottesville, what happened uh, with, with his, his travel ban, what happened with his disrespect for federal judges, what happened with his disrespect for the rule of law, disrespect for the press, that bill came due 
in 2018 in November. And Republicans suffered a historic loss, the likes of which no party has ever suffered before in terms of vote total. Well, that happens again in 2020, and there is no place, I said it before, there's no place for Republicans to run, there's no place for Republicans to hide so long as they're standing beside this president. If you want to hide behind his promises, here's another one. As Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories, and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.